Good evening, everyone who is a fan of Project Diablo 2. I am in the closed beta for Project Diablo 2 Season 5, and I have been testing quite a few things. And right now, this felt so good what I'm testing right now, I wanted to share it with you. So what are we testing today? As you can see from my toolbar, we are showing Cobra Strike. Kind of a sleeper ability that I kind of wanted to share to people and see if I could pique some interest to play the game. So... First off, let's get into some stats. Right off the bat, you can see that I have a lot of dexterity. Why do I have a lot of dexterity, you say, Lunbox? Because we're going for max block. I have tested claw block as well. I have tested no block at all. And the conclusion I came to is, especially in maps, survivability is key. This build has damage. It does just fine. <clears throat> not too worried about the damage so I'm gonna go for max block because it makes a very very noticeable difference you can also opt into more PDR which helps a lot as well I would actually recommend that because some of the maps get really beefy the bane of this build and just about every other melee build in the game that I have experienced is archers so if you're dealing with archers especially if they have might aura or fanaticism or concentration or a combination of those are gonna flatline you even with max block you have to play very defensive if you see that aura okay so we got enough strength to hold our gear we have enough dexterity to hit max block and the rest we put into vitality one of the things you'll notice in here is we are not res capped and that's okay because we still manage to go zoom zoom without using burst of speed and we can cap our resists with fade which is what i 100 percent recommend for this build there's a lot of ways you can play this, and we'll show that off in the gear. But first, let's keep looking at the stats. <clears throat> so one of the things you'll look in here, and you will notice that my IAS is not that great. It's 80, which is good. It's not the 102 breakpoint. Getting the 102 breakpoint is actually kind of tough, I noticed. you Without corruptions, which we do not have access to right now, getting to uh, 102 IAS is hard. But with corruptions, you can get it. And one of the things that's really nice about Assassin is that a lot of their gear is cheap. At least for now, unless it gets popular. Okay. MF, right now we're running our Magic Find setup when we have a bunch of skillers for damage. Okay. So, what about the items? Well, there's a couple iterations I'm going to show you. I'm going to do a Chaos Run, a Bail Run, and then I'm probably going to do another Chaos Run, and maybe another Bail Run after that with the, with the damage setup. Okay, so right now we're going to do the Magic Find setup. So we have a Bartux Cutthroat, two sockets with shales for more attack speed, so that way we can hit our breakpoint. You can, I've played it with sub 62 frames, and it feels pretty good, it feels fine. If you wanna put facets in here, facets make a big difference. Poison facets, Spe uh, specifically you want to go for the minus poison resistance. The damage, the plus damage doesn't really matter. You want the, you want the minus res. Shaco with a sham. Shams are going to be your best friend on here because getting cannot be frozen on just your gear is actually kind of tough because there are th some things on here that I feel are required to really make this build pop and they don't leave any room for cannot be frozen. The only flex room you have really is your boots. So you're going to be looking for cannot be frozen corruptions if you can get them or a chamron. And thankfully chamrons have not really ever been too expensive in PD2. So that shouldn't be too bad of a thing to chase for. Next, we're going to go for High Lord's Wrath for the attack speed, and that's it. The Lightning Resist is nice. Then we're going to go for Bramble, which is the best in slot chest. You can't go... You can't beat a Bramble. The increased poison damage is nice. The poison res is nice. The fire res is nice. Uh, nine life after kill is very good for your sustain because you're killing large groups pretty often. As you can see, I have terrible luck. And I rolled 36 to poison skill damage. I always roll terrible on Brambles, even in DCR. Next, we're going to go with Trangs for the increased poison skill damage. Then we're going to go for Nos Coil. We're going to go for Nos Coil specifically for the attack speed. The Leech is nice, but Cobra Strike actually handles Leech pretty great. You can go with no Leech and Cobra Strike will sustain you. It is fantastic. Your boots are flexible, for, but for the MF setup, you're going to want some more traps. For, ma for more magic find. As you can see, these weren't very good. I don't have good RNG, and I didn't feel like re-rolling them, so that's fine. Now, these are the two super required items. They are the rings, and I'm pretty sure if you've played PD2 for a while, you know what these are. First, carry on win. Carry on win 
has taken a, an indirect buff this season due to the fact that C Poison Creeper now can't die. And it reduces enemies' resistances by, I believe, 35%. So, this is now a must-have item, not only for Cobra Strike, but for every single poison build character in the entire game, bar none. Next, Wisp Projector. Wisp Projector gives us our Heart of the Wolverine, and that's what we want. This is a killer item. It's also rare, and it's going to be expensive. It's been expensive for a long time, and it's going to remain expensive. Probably more so now than before. Alright, on Swap... An awful CTA, because I'm bad at rolling CTAs. Look at that, we're noticing a trend. And a Lilith's Wall for the plus skills to make CTA even stronger. The Merc. The Merc, you want to prioritize attack speed, leech, and a Puss Spitter. That's it. So I up my Puss Spitter, put two shales in it for increased attack speed, and really the whole point of this is for the lower resistance proc which is really nice. It makes or breaks things on this build. Well, I wouldn't even say that, but it really helps. All right, I needed to wet my whistle there. So, I have an Endart Hills of Saj. Don't worry about the F. This is test server, right? So it just, actually, it just rolled that. I put a Rowl in it to compensate for the fire damage. Gladiator's Bane. Gladiator's Bane is fantastic because it has Cannot Be Froven, cannot be frozen cannot be frozen and a lot of defensive stats on top of critical strike this is just a killer chest if you can get it twitch throw is also an option uh what else twitch throw is good treachery is good for the attack speed and the fade proc those are really useful but really you have a lot of options for your chest piece drax for attack speed and leech string of ears for leech and Fizz Reduction. Immortal King's Boots. The boots, you can do, put whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever your Merc needs, you can you can put in your boot slot. And this is just a quiver I dropped. Uh, ED, attack speed. Pretty good, right? So there's your Merc. Specifically, you want an Act 1 Vigor Merc. Because you want the run speed, because you are not using Burst of Speed. And you want the Pus Spitter for the lower res proc. Skills. So first thing you do is you max out Cobra Strike. And then you come over to Shadow Disciplines and you max out Venom. Ta-da, you're done with the build. You don't need anything else. There are things you can get that are nice, though. So I came in and you got all the way down to Blade Shield because it's a free buff, really. It's a one-point wonder. <clears throat> in Martial Arts, I came down to Dragonflight, which I highly encourage. The other thing you can do... If you run across poison it means that you just can't handle they just won't drop is you can max out claws of thunder how do you max out claws of thunder 20 points in here and 20 points in phoenix strike that's it now you have a super high damage lightning attack to tackle your poison resist that you can't kill which i've yet to run into any but we'll get there and it's fully synergized because it only has one synergy it's phoenix strike all right all your other points so basically after you max out your damage and you get your dragon flight yes after you get your dragon flight you're done you can put your points into anything you want you can use phoenix strike if you want but it's not going to be as strong because right it's not maximally synergized you can use claws of thunder you can even use psychic hammer i've done that you can pump into shadow warrior or shadow master i've played with those i spent the remainder of my points into uh, a little into a little more into fade, and claw and dagger mastery. That's what I did. All right. So now we're gonna show you a quick chaos clear with our magic find setup. We're gonna ist in our storm shield. The storm shield. I don't know if I talked about it. the storm shield is preferable to dual claws because you will get max block and a lot of defensives. Okay. This is huge. The difference between the storm shield and dual claws is that. With a Storm Shield, you can Dragon Flight directly into Lord DeSace and kill him no problem. With Dual Claws, I got popped three runs in a row. And you definitely feel it in maps. You want your max block. Okay. So, let's go ahead and do a Chaos Run. Let's first make sure our hotkeys are good to go because that keeps being an issue in my runs. Okay, they are. Oh, I got to repair. So, we got to repair. See, that's how you can tell I'm not prepared for my video. Alright. 
right now I could tell you right now people are probably saying, Balloon Box, your HP is really low because you put so much into decks. It's fine. Not really going to need it. You'll see. All right, and we're ready to rock after we're done buffing. Don't got to rebuff our summons because they don't die. They don't take damage anymore. So let's watch these. Remember, this is with Bartux. Oh, I didn't show charms. Skiller, 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 Skiller. Thankfully, these aren't terribly expensive. Uh, res, 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 all res and life. Again, I would actually swap these out for more concentrated resistance, and magic find is what I would prefer. But this was just for ease of testing, okay? You don't don't look at this and say, oh man, it's ridiculous, he's using all res jewels, or uh, charms, trust me. Single focus reses will actually make things easier for you, okay? Uh, I did have a torch, because assassin torches are typically cheap, and I did an Annie, as it's, it's a chase item, right? So this is relatively strong gear. This isn't something you'd start with, but starting, all you need is about plus 10 skills, and an act one merc, and you're gonna crush. You don't even need lower res. When you're starting, when you're leveling, you don't need it. And, but though, let's be real, I would probably level as Wake of Fire. That's what I would do. But plus 10 skills to Cobra Strike, and you're ready to rock. Alright. So we move on here. You'll see things drop pretty quick. The mobs I want you to pay attention to while we're killing are the Fire Lords. And these guys are good. Look at this. These guys are poisoning me. And watch this. I still haven't broken their poison, and they died because my fizz damage is so high. I did up my Bartux. So, for full transparency, I did up them. Okay. So, now we're in Chaos Sanctuary proper. One of the things I use to dictate if a build is good is how quickly you can kill Chaos. And I don't really care if it's like one minute, five minutes. What I look for is, can I clear Chaos in the time allocated by one battle orders? If I have to rebuff battle orders, the build needs work. Thankfully, this works just fine. One of the things you can do is, if you look on the bottom left with the new buff timers, you can see how many charges you have. And you can actually stock up charges till you're at level 3, and then use Dragonflight to discharge and kill an entire pack with a level 3. So let's see, let's 1, 2, oh, I fucked up. Oh, I swore, demonetized. 1, 2, 3, okay, so let's find a pack. Boom, oh, there we go. Here's your cloud, right? But those are Venom Lords, and look at that, they died, I wasn't even on them. Venom Lords are highly resistant, so it's really good to see them die quickly. They're not immune, but they're just highly resistant to everything, as you are probably well aware. So we're going a little bit slower, obviously, because we're talking. We got cursed, but we're doing just fine. Our damage is killer. Now, I want you also to pay attention. I haven't used a single potion. My mana is doing good. Watch, my mana just popped back to full because we hit stage 2 of Cobra Strike, which is currently showing 230% leech. That's kind of insane. And here we go. Here's the big test on why block matters. Watch, now that I've said something about it, I'm going to die. Watch. Okay, so here we go, and I'm just going to pop right in. Boom. They're done. Done. That was a level 3 Dragonflight is straight into him to discharge it, and they died. That's why you go max block. Now granted, that was just really good damage. We are showing about 20k Cobra Strike uh, poison damage. Alright, we are about to show you Diablo. One of the things to pay attention to Diablo is I'm not stacking Crushing Blow. I don't have a source of static. And I want you to watch how his damage gets chunked every third cycle. I want you to look at that. Still got over 100 seconds on all our buffs. We're good to go. Alright, boom. You see that? Boom. Look at that. Boom. And he's dead. Pretty cool, right? So, that's just the nature of how Cobra Strike works. Would highly recommend. I could, I could show you maps, but really, I'm just trying to show you what what you can do to farm efficiently. You don't need to do maps to to profit in this game, okay? 
Last season, I just did a Teeth Necro and I farmed Chaos and I made over 30 high runes just with the things I got in here and crazy corrupts that I got. That's it. Uh, map. This is good in maps though. Not to say it's not. It is good in maps. I'm just, you know, you can see, you can gauge the potential just by watching this. So let's go ahead and show Chaos. Look at our resists, right? This is with Fade active. Capped res. Okay. We have a little bit of lightning absorb, thankfully, because of Wisp Projector. So let's do this. Alright, rebuffed, rebuffed, rebuffed. Let's rock. Okay, we got the worst map. We have Burning Souls right off the bat. That's okay, though. Okay, let's watch our life. Now, unlike Chaos Sanctuary, I would encourage you to heal yourself in uh, World Stone Keep, right? Especially because Black Souls are just kind of ridiculous. Archers can be a problem. But remember the damage I did to Diablo. Keep that in mind as I head towards Bale, okay? Because I think the play for Cobra Strike Assassins would be to farm Bale for respect tokens, uh, essences. And because Bale, no one likes to farm Bale. Bale sucks, right? Let's be real. Bale is not a fun fight. Takes a long time. Stingy with his loot. You gotta sit through the waves. You gotta get through World Sun Keep, which is one of the most dangerous areas in the entire game, if not the most dangerous area in the entire game. But I think this class, more than just about any other, excels. And notice, by the way, we've ran across plenty of poison immunes, and we are doing just fine. So now, with the shrine, we're looking at 21k. One thing I would I would caution against in this build, not caution against, but make you aware of, is that because you are melee and you are attacking fairly often, if you're doing longer maps with high density, there's a big chance you're going to have to repair mid-map. It's just one of the things you're going to have to deal with. Just pay attention so you don't kill yourself because you can't attack. Make sense? Alright. So here we go. We're not even really thinking. We're just clearing. And there's a better version of this with just two item swaps. Possibly three, depending on if you want to change boots. Right? I like rocking war traps, but you can rock goblin toes, gore riders, whatever, because you are doing a substantial amount of physical damage. So things like deadly strike, things like crushing blow, are all going to be significant for you. I just am not using it because look at how much damage I'm doing. Okay, he's gone. All right. Waves three, four, and five are really big on this. So he's poison immune, and look at that damage. Look at that damage. He was poison immune. It didn't show that I broke it. This build is awesome. I was planning on rolling a rabies druid, and I've tested a rabies druid, and I should probably make a rabies druid video too, because it is good. But I think this build stole the show for me, and this is probably what I'm going to use for my season starter. I'll probably level his wake of fire, but I'm going to transition into this as soon as I get a bar tux and plus 10 skills total. All right, so here we go. Three. I'm in the middle. I'm not even scared. That's wave four. Now here comes wave five, right? This one's always pretty scary. Ta-da. Now we go to go Bill. kill Bale. Now remember my damage I did to Diablo. And the cool thing is we can just chase him down with Dragonflight every time he runs away. We don't even have to worry about our mana. We just self-leech it back. Just like that, we're already under 50%. Done. That's with our magic find setup. Pretty impressive, would you say? Okay. 
So next, let's go ahead and show you a more damage oriented focus. Okay. So we're going to swap, just for the sake of this video, we're only going to swap two items. We're going to swap our weapon and we're going to swap our helm. We're going to go with an Andariel's Visage with, once again, a Chamron. Ideally, you want a two-socket Andariel's, so that way you can put a Rowl to compensate for the loss of Fire Res. Okay? So we'll pop that in. And then we're going to go for a Plague. The ideal base for a Plague would be a 3 to Cobra Strike, 3 to Venom Claw. But, good luck. Because it took me over 200 rolls just to get this one, which was plus three Cobra Strike. Okay, not the most fun grind. But if you see one, I would hold on to it, no matter what character you're building, because a three Cobra Strike plus three Venom is probably going to be worth a lot of runes. So we'll put this in. Why? Oh, why is Plague so good for Cobra Strike? Well, for one, you put it in a fast claw. For good attack speed you're getting lower resist when struck which is more uptime and lower resist with your a1 merc you're getting cleansing r which you will notice when we do chaos makes a huge difference it makes things so much smoother when the r is just fall or when the curses just fall right off of you you get plus two to base skills plus whatever you had on your base to begin with so right now we're rocking a plus five cobra strike assassin and then the big thing right here is minus 20 enemy poison resistance on sheet, this deals less damage than the Bartuck setup, but the minus poison resistance 20, which is four facets worth, is significant and cannot be underestimated. So we're going to go ahead and run this build. We have less HP, less on sheet damage, right? Look at that. So that's, let's, let's check after buffs. Go back into chaos, buff up. Okay, 14k. Alright, so let's let's go ahead and let it rock. Let's see how this feels. These are poison immunes, by the way. These morphines, they suck. These are poison immunes. This guy, I can't break his poison. And we killed him. Dang, so this is a good showcase when I'm trying to show how fast this build goes. This is a good showcase of just all the poison res monsters. Alright. As this is a poison build with uh, normal non poison mean mobs, which now these are broken, right? So now they're just going to melt. You can just kind of fire and forget. You'll notice the difference, especially when we make it to the Venom Lords. Like before, I said they're highly resistant to everything. And this weapon, Plague, definitely goes through them much faster than Martux. And again, you can enhance your damage with the cost of MF. Are you kidding me? Okay, well... <sighs> my RNG for Season 5 is dead, as I've gotten a Burr, a Cham, a Vex, and a Gargoyle's Bite while testing. I'm going to be poverty status in Season 5 on the 24th. Alright, so look at that. I wasn't even attacking him. He's dead. Work through these guys. Dead. Merc is still alive and kicking. This guy's just going to disappear. Our timer is at 3.56 because we sat and talked about gear. Another interesting aspect of the plague is that it has freeze target. Freeze target plus three. So you're getting a little more safety in the sense that you're slowing and straight up stopping normal monsters from attacking you. Your direct target just gets frozen in place, which is fantastic. And he's gone. Now, I could be going a lot faster, of course, because I could be going the seal pop method, where I just open the seals, kill the bosses, don't give a crap about the rest of the mobs. But 
I just wanted to demonstrate the, the clear potential. And you can see I took a lot of damage there. Just leached it right back. Didn't care. Now let's go ahead and watch Diablo. Sure enough, we'll do one more uh, bail run. At, we'll do a bail run with this just to show you for comparison's sake. All right, so there we go. Chunking him away. No crushing blow. Done. <laughs> I mean, jeez. None of you should play this build. In fact, this build is terrible. I don't know why anyone would bother. Uh, 0 of 10. Do not recommend. Uh, please just throw all of your martial arts skillers away. Or give them to a poor, dumb uh, content creator for pennies on a dollar. Okay, That would that would be preferable. Because you don't want to do this, right? This is, this is a terrible build. All right, let's rock. Oh man, we are lucky today. Look at that, all the burning souls. So they, that that guy was poison, poison immune? Hey, look at that, we know where the exit is. Good stuff, let's get there. And again, this does really good in maps. You just gotta worry about archers. I might do a separate standalone video without me really talking so much just to showcase how this build does on Blood Moon. Not that Blood Moon is indicative of a build is good or not, but those monsters have a lot of HP and it's a good demonstration of the flat outright damage this does. The Death Guards or whatever their name is. Not much of a threat when you're max block. And even in the DPS setup, we still have 102 magic find. And you can get more with charms. Like, my charms are not optimized for magic find, as you can see. Wait, I went to Worldstone Keep level 1. Yes, I did. Ha ha ha. Let's fix that. I was too busy talking. I don't have any normal healing potions, and I don't really care. We're going to be just fine. Go pick up this. Our buffs are still good. This is scary. This is unironically scary. Okay. Now I'm going to go pick up some health potions. Because <laughs> I believe that was a conviction aura. Oh, my Merc died. Yep. See, look at it. I'm not even paying attention. So let's go get the Merc. We want... You can see how slow you're going without your Vigor aura. And this would feel a lot smoother, too, if I was on a proper GS, because right now my latency is kind of high. But that's okay. We'll do all right. Let's buff her up. Come on, girlfriend. Okay. That's one of the problems with an Act 1 Merc, is they're squishy. There's ways around it with other builds, but this build, not so much. But it's okay. You just give her battle orders. And if you can't make a CTA, you just get an Act 5 Merc who can cast battle orders for you because the future is now, old man. But specifically, if you're doing some other kind of build, like, oh, I don't know, Vengeance, check out Corpse Morn. Check out using a Corpse Morn for specifically, well, for one, the flat damage is nice, but check it out for its uh, chance to reanimate. And tell me how safe your Merc feels after you have, like, an army of 12 or 13 skeletons basically taking all the enemy aggro away from you and your Merc. It's nice. Would recommend. In fact, I'd recommend it over rolling this build. Remember, trash build. Do not roll. Keep the prices down. Alright, so we're just going to go through this quickly, try and find the exit. There we go. See, we just popped a dragon flight. That thing died. The whole group was just done. We don't really care with this build about curses on us, because they just fall right off. The proper buff up. 
Dragonflight can clear an entire pack. Burning Souls are poison immune, and we don't care. Also notice, in terms of cost, look at what we are not building. Because it doesn't impact poison. We're not building Infinity. So that's two Burr runes right off the bat that we don't have to worry about. We're not building Enigma. So there's a Jaw and a Burr that we're not worrying about. We're using Bramble. You want low? You want low and a Cham? Is it low? No, Ohms and Sirs and Chams are really what you want. And you might not even need as many Chams if you get good corruptions. I cannot be frozen on a ring, cannot be frozen on your boots. And there are boots with native cannot be frozen, like Rite of Passage, that you can wear, wear early on. <clears throat> good run speed. No real other stats, but they do have cannot be frozen. So I would recommend those. All right. And they're all going to die. Because we proc lower res. Alright, we're on the... the... White flag is up. We're on the last lap. And look at how fast those died compared to the Bartux. Oops. Let's, let's rebuff. Uh, boom. All right. So pay attention to Bale's life. Still getting chunked. Look at that. He's just getting dropped. Let's get an essence, baby. Nope, no essence. Alright, that's fine. There you have it. This is the Cover Strike Poison Assassin. 100% would not recommend because assassins are typically very cheaply geared. You can go dual clouds if you want more damage. I prefer to go max block even though I'm not. Okay, so while I was filming the end of that, my computer completely shut off and as such i couldn't finish with my closing arguments but that was okay because i rewatched the video that i had and i came up with a couple more things i wanted to talk about on why this build is so great or just other options so for one you don't really have to worry about poison immunes while you are dealing with this all you got to do is have some form of lower res or even your vine alone should provide minus 35 percent which is enough to break most poison immunes so i would not worry about that there are also other gearing options you can have that i didn't mention namely in the chest one thing that completely slipped my mind which would make getting to your 102 breakpoint for attack speed so much easier and much more budget would be treachery if you made a treachery you can have plus two to assassin skills and 45 IAS, increased attack speed, which would allow you to get to your next speed breakpoint, which would be a huge damage increase and survivability increase prior to making a Bramble. So in conclusion, I would say that Cobra Strike has actually been good for a long time, but has also just gotten another buff in the beta and will probably carry over into live, namely in the attack rating. So you're not gonna have to prioritize AR as much. But Cobra Strike is a great option and is doable as a season starter, and you can even level as it. And I can say this from experience, not necessarily from Assassin, but just from Poison experience, which in season three, I season started as a Lightning Fury Amazon, and it was terrible as soon as I got into hell and started fighting, uh, encountering lightning immunes. I switched over to Plague Zon and just waltzed through the rest of the campaign because I was dealing poison damage. There are far fewer notable poison damage enemies in the game that you have to worry about. So any poison build starting off with maybe the exception of Poison Nova Necro will do very well. Poison... Uh, Desecrate Necro would do pretty good because you have your summons and everything, but we're talking about Cobra Strike. So pros and cons. The build is cheap as of every single season 
except for two, I guess, because Trap Sin was good. But if you're going martial arts, it was cheap then. So it's a martial arts skill, so that's cheap. It's fast. It's melee, which is fun and engaging. It's very easy on the APM. It's not hard on your crinkled old man hands that I know all of us have because we're all a bunch of old boomers and shit. So because we have quick cast now, I held E, which is my, my primary attack. I held E and just went around and auto attacked with E. So it's really, really good if you have problems with your hands. Like let's say you're a poor tragic soul who had their hands destroyed by that evil villain known as Path of Exile. I know you have. I know you're here. I know you're playing this game. I'm one of those people, too. This build is perfect. It's a one-button build. You don't have to worry about a thing. Maybe every now and then you teleport. Not a big deal. Okay? So, would I recommend this build? Nah. Zero ten. Don't do it. If I find out that Assassin gets more popular because of this, I'm taking the fucking video down. Alright? Have a good night.